Welcome back guys. Josh is working on installing the last of our three Mr. Cool DIY mini split systems. Once he has everything all set up and good to go, we're gonna get everything up and running and take you over to our solar power system to show you if and how it is working with our setup. We're in the powerhouse right now. We have two of these split systems going. We have things plugged in to run our normal stuff in there. Lights on here in the powerhouse, and we're drawing roughly uh, 2,000 watts. Um, you can see right here, the load is actually 2,025, 2,030, just fluctuates a little bit. And we're still charging, this is going on the battery. Right now I'm in absorption. This is what I'm making right now on the, on the uh, solar. It's starting to ramp down a little bit because we are we're at 96% charge right now, so it's starting to slow down the charge. If I was to go ahead and turn something else on, my load would go up, obviously. And also, the output right here would also go up and start bringing more charge in. We'll start using the sun to run all of our appliances and everything we got going on, and we'll buy still charges to batteries. This thing, the, char the solar charger we do have, it uh, maxes out at, at 80 amps. Right now, we got about 54, so the size of our array you can still bring more power in. We have good sun hours right now. The sun's shining. It's what time is it? It's 11:28 uh, a.m. right now, so it's still early, and we're almost fully charged on two units. So this thing does work. Now let's run all three split systems at the same time. So we got the boys split system set for about uh, eight feet too low. <laughs> um, these things are supposed to be about like a foot, like roughly a foot below the ceiling of an eight foot ceiling. Um, we are in a triangle uh, cove like thing up in the loft, right? Yes. And uh, I have no flat wall surface that can fit this guy until it gets right here this low. So this is actually just going to be used to cool there area right here. Yes. We have the other two split systems to cool the downstairs area, which yesterday did a great job. It did. It was cold. Also, the boys, you can see behind me, they've had this window unit now for a while, and it's obviously at just about the same height as the Mr. Cool it's system. It's a little bit lower. It's a little bit lower, but this, they've actually had to turn this one off because they've been too cold up here on mm -hmm. the hottest days outside, even when it's been hot downstairs. So, even though this is supposed to be higher in the air, I do think that it's actually going to work out yes. well for them just because this one has worked well and this is actually bigger. Yes, that's actually uh, 8,000 BTU. Um, this is a 12,000. So yeah. it's actually one and a half times the size of this one. So it's going to do a fine job. I know it's down low. It should be up high, but I have no clearance for anything. So We don't have any options. Work. No. We, we, the the A-frame house, you know? I mean, everything's so much harder. I the, mean, the struggle is real when you don't have any... Flat walls. No. You've got the benefit of the really cool vibe of that, you know, mountain. But, but every cuts dream an angle too. <laughs> but every cuts an angle. Yeah, so no big deal. But Josh can do it in all angles. All angles. <laughs> So we are heading outside now to do the connections out there for the Mr. Cool unit. We are going to leave that window unit in and we are leaving the other black mobile unit that we have downstairs in just so that we can test everything and compare it to the Mr. Cool unit and just show you guys all of that. We think pretty, it'll be a neat much experiment. How, how efficient they are. Can you see me or Yeah, not? I can see you. I'm going to compare who's more efficient, the Mr. Cool or these window units that we have. Keep in mind, the, each of these Mr. Cools are bigger than each of our wind again, so we'll see how it plays out. I got my gun, what have I done? Can anybody save me now? If the things I've done can be undone, can anybody show me? Seamless in motion 
So it's got the line set hooked up to the outdoor unit for the loft. Um, opened the valves up, got everything turned on. I guess the biggest question or comment we got in the last video is we need to vacuum down these lines before we open the valves up. The thing about this Mr. Cool system, the reason why it's so DIY is all that stuff's taken care of before it gets you. I don't have to do any of that stuff. All I have to do is hook it up, open the valves up, and it's done. Compared to other ones, we gotta put a vacuum on it, use special tools, and get everything set. You don't have to do that on this one, so that's why we chose this guy. It's DIY, pretty much homeowner friendly. We do this work, do the electrical side, and it's done. Our solar power system includes 12 385 watt solar panels. We also upgraded from three Simplify batteries to five Simplify batteries, and we have a 5548 Schneider inverter which is inside our powerhouse along with our batteries and our other solar components. One of the questions we get asked a lot is why we decided to put our panels all the way out in the field. And the reason for that is that we are completely surrounded on all sides by mountains. So had we put them anywhere else on our property, we would have either had no sunlight hitting the panels or we would have greatly reduced the amount of sunlight hours that hit the panels. Um, we did accommodate for a voltage drop by upsizing our wire from the panels over to our powerhouse. So we are under a 3% voltage drop on that. A common misconception is that we are running 48 volts from our panels over to our powerhouse. And we are actually, due to the way that we wired them in series, running 288 volts from our panels over to our powerhouse. We officially have all three of the mini splits installed. They're done. We had the two on all day long. Yes. It's ice cold inside. It's completely hot out here. You walk inside and it's just a wave of like heaven the washes entire, over you. The entire first level is. Yes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go upstairs and one in the loft on. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go out there and check the solar out and see how everything's doing. All right, breakers on. Let's fire her up. The upstairs unit is turned on. We let it cool down for a few minutes, but meanwhile, we're down here. Let's check the temperature, I guess we're putting out of these units and let's go around the house with this little laser thermometer and see what we got going on. So right, right there, coming out the unit, we're about 38 degrees, 39 degrees coming out of that unit right there. So this is cold, cold air coming out. Walking around the house, the floor right here, we got 67 degrees. Over here by the windows where the sun was beating in, it was 90. Now it's down to 70, everything's cooling down. Check it over here at the wall. We're at about 68 degrees here. So this temperature, this room temperature is roughly 68 degrees. So it's nice, cool, and crisp. We had this thing on all day long. It's cold as can be in this back room. We're gonna see how cold we can get this place. Um, it's 90, it was at 91 degrees outside today? Yes. So right here, see so what we got? But in this area right there coming out, it shows 35 degrees in this area right there. So. This is putting out a lot of cold air. I think the wall over here is probably 60 degrees. Next to the panel, the wall is 60 degrees. 61, 60-ish. 
So keep in mind, we've only had two units running the entire day. We just now turned the third one on. But those two units has cooled this entire first level down without a problem. I mean, within the first hour, I think it was cold. Uh, the upstairs is a little warm. Everybody knows heat rises. So we actually have that one turned on now. It's going to cool down. So now let's go check out the solar setup and see what everything is drawing and see how our batteries are looking. Looking at our battery monitor. We're 100% charged, so it says full. So this thing is fully charged and we're running three of the split systems. For each uh, 12,000 BTU, we have the freezer behind me and the powerhouse on. You hear the clicking also it's for the bench charger with the refrigerator and everything plugged in, the kids upstairs watching a movie, all that jazz. So right now our load is around 2,700 watts. That's with everything going. So looking back at our batteries, we're fully charged. You see right there, battery level is charged full. Um, we still have power coming in. We're trickle charging on the battery. That right there goes towards the battery. Our output is uh, 56 amps, which converts to uh, 3,000 watts coming from the panels. Like I said, we're actually fully charged, so it's actually trickle charging the battery, so it's dumping some of that power coming in. Um, if we turn something else on, the output would jump up and it, the sun would pretty much handle more things going on in that house. This inverter here, I think it's like a, it, it's 5,400 running watts consistently without an issue. But like I said, we're doing about 2,700 right now. This thing is surged at 7,000 watts. I don't know if it's for a half hour or 60 minutes, but it surged at 7,000 watts. The highest I've ever had this up, up to is around, I think, 4,500 watts. I was running a bunch of things at once. But uh, this thing can run all of our AC and everything in the house without a problem. I think the biggest issue we're gonna have is with the battery bank. We have five batteries right now. It's running everything throughout the night. We're gonna have to be a little conservative on that. But throughout the day when we have sun up, there's no issues at all in any of our systems. But judging the square footage of our house, it's around like 1,100 square feet on the first level. And to heat or cool that, we need roughly around 24,000 BTUs. And we actually have that with the two units we have downstairs on the first level. And the second level, I guess, is a loft area. We have another system up there, so it gives us a total of 36,000 BTU. We're not going to need to run all three units at the same time. Uh, we're probably, gonna, as a matter of fact, I know that from yesterday's experience, we had the two units running to cool the entire house down with no issue. So tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and cook, turn off the one that's in the, I guess, the dormer of the main area and run the one upstairs and the one downstairs in the back room and see how that cools the entire house. I'm hoping the cold air will flow out from downstairs in the first level and also from the loft, it'll come down like a waterfall and uh, cool that front space. We'll see how it works. We're going to try that, but I doubt we're going to need to seriously run three of these units full time all the time. I'm going to run inside and unplug all of the Mr. Cool units. Josh is going to wait here and show you guys what the system looks like without any of the units running. And then we are going to head back inside again and plug in our older window units and compare. So we turned off all the Mr. Cool units and you can see right now we're actually drawing about 320 watts right now. 320. And it's loud. It is loud. Oops. Mm -hmm. Loud. Loud again. So the winter unit does its job. It got down to 42 degrees, so it blows cold air. The problem is it's, it's loud. It's not nearly as efficient as the Mr. Cool. Uh, this winter unit is 8,000 BTU. The Mr. Cool is 12,000 BTU. So it's actually one and a half times the size, and it draws less power. Um, also, the Mr. Cool blows heat. This guy does not blow heat. So another thing to note is that the one that was in the loft, it would get nice and cold. The kids would need to grab a blanket. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would want to turn it off. But that unit that was upstairs and this one that's down here, which granted they are smaller than the Mr. Cool ones we have, mm -hmm. those together, they would only kind of take the bite off of the heat in the house down here on the main net level. They never actually like made it cold. You, you no. didn't walk in the door and feel what you feel now with the new units up that we have running. So combined, I guess the downstairs units 10,000, upstairs units 8,000, so a combined total of 18,000 BTU. So now, versus a 36,000 BTU, now let's check uh, wattages and see what draws versus what. Yes. Now we're back at the powerhouse. We have the window unit turned on. We actually have the portable window unit turned on also. Look at what we have here. It's actually drawing 2,300 watts with everything going right now. So it's actually about 400 watts less than our mini splits. But you gotta keep in mind, those three mini splits running is 36,000 BTUs 
versus the 18,000 BTUs with those portable in the window unit. So we are saving drastic amounts of energy using those mini splits versus using those two other units that pretty much just take a bite off the heat. That's it. It's evening time now. Uh, sun's starting to go down. It's like 6, 10 p.m. Sun's starting to go down behind the mountain. The shades start coming up towards the panels. And you look at our system, we're actually drawing uh, 1,300 watts. I'm sorry, 1,370 watts right now. We have two of the split systems on. They're on auto, so they ramp, they're ramped down. The house is nice and cold. Um, you look over here, right there, we're fully charged right now still. We've been running the AC all day. This solar system had no issues when everything we ran today. Um, everything was fully operational. We had TV on today with the kids, computers on, and did a little laundry. So everything we got going on with this system and the Mr. Cool uh, split systems all works great. next day now for I guess the past two nights now we have run two of the three systems until about an hour hour and a half after the Sun has gone down yeah so it gets probably around 75 degrees at night so once the Sun goes down it's for 65 degrees inside the house mm -hmm. the past two nights um, we turn it off and it stays cool inside the house the rest of the night and into the morning yes um, this morning we woke up checked the batteries that's like 82 percent charged so we're good there. Aaron went ahead and fired up the washer, the dryer, and the dishwasher, and uh, we started going first thing in the morning. Yeah, we did our normal thing. All of those sort of things are going to be done here in a while. Mm -hmm. um, the house is actually not fully in sun yet, and it's still cool in there. So by the time those things are done and it's you know the heat of the day really hits, then we can turn back on the air conditioner and repeat the whole process. Cool yes. the house down; it'll stay cool at night, and so and, on. And luckily for us, I think at around one one thirty, we live in, in the woods. Yeah. So we're in shade by one thirty in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, so it's nice. Like the hottest part of the day, we're in the shade where we're at. So it's yeah. nice. So I think that there's probably three major takeaways for us from all mm -hmm. of this. One is that the Mr. Cool system that we have, it really is cool turning house. out to be all that in a bag of chips. Yeah, it, it, it destroys uh, the portable window unit, the window unit, and the portable window unit. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no comparison whatsoever on energy savings and uh, efficiency and cooling the house down. Yeah, I never. No, we never got the house cold with those units. In never, the never. Never got them cold. No. This made it ice cold in there, which is great. I mean, I've, I've put a because Josh wanted to test, of course, and see quite how cold he could get the house to be. So I've, I've actually put on like sweatpants and a sweater. The kids have gotten under blankets. I mean, it's just kind of weird for us because. It Two hasn't years. been like that in a really long time. I mean, and, and we weren't really sure what direction we were going to go, if we were going to have air conditioning or not, but this has made it possible, and yep. uh, it's cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so, so second of all, we've talked about before that solar is not going to be the right choice for everybody. It was for us, and if it ends up being right for your family, then – the big thing I can't stress enough to keep in mind is that you need to size your system yes. properly for how you want it to perform and what you want it to run. And keep in mind, we're building on the system as we go also. Yeah. So we're starting to get more panels. We'll go ahead and parallel an inverter in there eventually, more batteries, all, all coming down the line. We're, we're going to keep beefing it up as we go. Yeah, ba baby steps, which yes. the, the, the solar system, the entire build, all of the, it's all been like that. Yep. Um, but if if you don't size the system properly, then you could be one of those people who ends up being frustrated and kind of throwing the towel in on solar. So yeah. that is very important. Correct. And lastly, uh, being off grid looks different for everybody. So it's mm -hmm. no like it doesn't. You, some people have solar. Some people have hydro or wind power or rainwater catchment system or a well. I mean, there's so many different ways that being off grid can look. It really just is defined as not being tied into public utilities Correct. like the electrical grid or mm -hmm. public water or sewer so it don't feel like it means that you are necessarily going to have to live a pioneer lifestyle if that's the way that you want to live then you know that of course is an option mm -hmm. or if you want to have a more modern off-grid lifestyle like we do with appliances and mm -hmm. now air conditioning 
Size your system right. <laughs> you're, and you're good. Then size right. your system right and grow in baby steps and you can get there. And before you know it, you'll be like Josh hanging out in his underwear, eating homemade goat's milk ice cream while laying in front of his off-grid air conditioner. It's a good life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. Thanks, guys. See ya.